from Los Angeles, sure. California. Where the Mad Scientist Party are. Oh, hi, friends. Welcome back to another episode of Mad Scientist Party Hour. My name's Kevin Kraft. Once again, joined by a man who is completely nude from the waist down and is currently putting a tiny party hat on the tip of his boner. That's Jeff Clark. It's a huge party hat, actually. <laughs> and it's very baggy. <laughs> yeah. And massive. Beaming to us from Night City. The bearded booger eating gonk known as Shuddy Boy. Oh. Uh, for our YouTube viewers, I tried tweaking the lighting again, and I'm no longer blue, but I still don't look like I have a nose. So that is definitely from the light right above you, fr- above the dining room table. Yeah, it's the umbrella light. Now, if I turn this off, oh. I look like um, I'm in Anonymous. It, it is, is yeah. spooky. It is time to hack the government. Meow, meow, meow. I, like, I do kind of like the lighting gradient you got going on there. You know what it is? It's the fucking light of the iPad. <laughs> That's lighting up my face. So I don't know. Uh, I'll try a few more tweaks. Bring uh, the umbrella light down. But, mm-hmm. Not right now, uh, but have it more... At face level, and tilt the umbrella so it's more perpendicular to the ground. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Well, I tried. Guys. Sick of that conversation. I tried. Fast, I, tried. Huh? Yeah. Uh, I wanted I to start off. Fast. Sorry, I was. I was also trying to find an email. Our inbox is nothing but fucking Patreon alerts, and I cannot find a way to send all Patreon notifications to a fucking separate box or something. But uh, I saw an email we got that I I thought would be a good thing to start the show off with. This is from Tamara or Tamara? Tamara. Tamara. T-A-M-A-R-A. Tamara. 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 We'll go with Tamara Tamara for now. Tamara. Tamara. The subject of the email is... Like Tia and Tamara. Shut up, shoddy boy. Subject of the email is lady listener from Canada, and she says, hey, hey guys, somewhat new listener and fairly new Patreoner. Just wanted to send you an all email to say I'm loving the podcast more and more every day. Been an Ellis listener for years, and I've met you, Kevin, at Ellis Mania in 2017. I think you're great on the Ellis show, but really love your nerdy silliness on MSPH. Jeff, your rants crack me up every time. Recently, the Aunt Becky one, OMG hilarious. (laughs) A lot of people, whether they agree with you or not, regardless, have found that uh, very entertaining. Shuddy, so laid back and sarcastic. Great dynamic with the three of you. Since I'm kind of new, and maybe some others are as well, wondering if you guys might be able to do a show with some background info about yourselves, how you guys know each other, and how the MSPH show got started just a thought. Keep up the awesome content. You bring a smile to my face every show. Tamara, Tamara, aka Mara, sweaty unic- su- sweaty acorn captain. <laughs> All right, shout out to you. Clearly a wolf knight. Where? Okay. All right. I was gonna say, is that like an IG handle? No, that's that's definitely a wolf knife name. Uh, okay, cool. so yeah, I guess with, you know, the, the show getting a nice boost in listeners, uh, in the last couple months and the show being fucking 10 years old at this point, couldn't hurt to drop in a quick refresher. All right. Jeff already okay. needs to interject. No, I just, no, 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 no. We can do that. We can do this if you want. Cause I had like a little rant that I ha- I was going to go on before you read the nice email, um, that kind of combines our truce right now in the MSPH, let's say, I don't know, universe, Puniverse, but YouTube, there we go. you got it. YouTube and Patreon, how those numbers are somewhat mirroring each other is a fucking mystery to me. And Patreon actually does better than our YouTube. So I needed to scold 
some of the Puminati. That is not I how love. you get anything done in this game, Jeff. You never scold. Well, I gotta suck dicks. I do that. I do that in the podcast all the time. All the time I'm doing. I'm I'm sucking dicks in the hey, podcast. If you want to make it in this base, you gotta suck some dicks. See, yeah. whatever. Go fucking watch and subscribe to our channel on fucking YouTube. We need to get the numbers up. How we have more people paying us money than watching us on YouTube <laughs> doesn't even make fucking sense. I, <laughs> If all of you, literally, if all of you just just hit play on YouTube, on our YouTube channel, and then open another tab and did whatever the fuck you did on the internet, we would get more views a week than we have, or as many views a week as we do Patreon subscribers. It makes fucking zero sense, and it bums me out. Like, we have a ton of fucking listeners. I, I think I what it is, it. Jeff, is it our... It bums me out. We have... There's a, there's a YouTube demo... And then there's like an everything else demo. And I think since we were off YouTube for so damn long, we've just built up, you know, that demo that's not super huge on YouTube. Because like, I don't know, it was the same thing. Um, I had people hitting me up endlessly on social media that I should, I should start a Twitch stream. And like, it was constant hammering, hammering, hammering. And one day I was just like, all right, I'll give it a shot. And I fucking, I bought cameras and I got equipment for it and stuff. And I, I did Twitch streams for a few months, and the most I got was like 20 people. <laughs> yeah, it was fucking freaky scenes. I hear you. I yeah. don't get it. I so I was it. just like, all right, you know, it must have literally been the only people asking for a Twitch that were interested, and even maybe only a quarter of those people actually planned on following through. So I don't know. The, the YouTube's up there for the people that give a shit about it, and at least we still do good numbers podcast wide. We just. You know, look like a bunch of fucking needle dicks on YouTube. I mean, that's all right. Doesn't that's... everyone have a fucking YouTube account? Just just go real quick and, and subscribe and like for fuck's sake. Help us out. Well, yeah, it is youtube.com slash mad scientist party hour for anybody interesting that Jeff hasn't made salty. Yep. Yeah, Ke- Kevin anybody will suck your Jeff dick to make up for all my saltiness. Oh, don't make me call you pussies. <laughs> <laughs> like me. Uh, Are we done anyway. with Tamara? Well, no, because we didn't answer a fucking question, Jeff. We haven't question, even Jeff. started. <laughs> oh, I don't want to do an origin story. All right, now that I've sign lined everything, uh, are we done? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the show started when I still lived on the East Coast. And I started it with my homie Miguel, who I've known since I was a teenager. And we used to film stunts and skits. And I always felt like Miguel, Miguel and I had a really solid comedy dynamic. Like, any time the two of us were just hanging out at a party bullshitting, like, people were... All right, Jeff, turn your fucking video off for a second. Jesus Christ. Yeah, it's going to be the like whole episode weapon. if you're like, oh, you but, know what, I have to interject with uh, a different story. Like a, lethal, like a lethal weapon dynamic. I just wanted to, you know, I wanted to better describe it. and you know, I wanted to point out very... that you're different races. <laughs> You're like Riggs and Murtaugh. It's very, it's, it's very Mel and Donald. <laughs> so I, Love you know, it. when when I saw that podcasts were starting to be get like getting a tiny bit more mainstream and shit, I was like, all right, well, this seems like a good time to strike. Uh, I am a radio dude. Fuck it, let's give it a shot. So I reached out to Rob Sprantz, who I didn't really know personally. We were friends on Facebook. And I had met him a couple of times because when I worked for the Howard Stern show, I helped out on some of the secondary channels um, and the, the like offshoot shows. So I call screened for Superfan Roundtable, which Rob was a guest on regularly. And uh, when I saw him just putting all this stuff out, like, hey, I just launched a podcast, I hit him up early and I was like, hey, uh, I kind of want to start one of those too. Could you sort of help me out? And he sent me a document that had like an itemized list of everything we needed equipment wise. He started an iTunes page for us. He pretty much, that's why we call him the Godfather. He, he got the ball rolling like immediately and I'm too stupid to do it without his help. Uh, and I still am. So he was also like, Hey, and you know, I've been toying with the idea of starting a network. Would you like to be the first show that joins? So it was, his podcast at the time was called The Glory Hole, and as he grew and got bigger, it got to be a, a, a bigger hurdle to pitch to big-name guests. Be like, hey, you want to come on my show, The Glory Hole? And they're like, oh, oh my God. So you just yeah. shorten it to The Hole. It Fucking was sellout. 
the Glory Hole Radio Network until Bobby Kelly got involved and they changed it to Riotcast, which uh, I guess dissolved last year. Uh, and then, you know, I moved to L.A. and Miguel was already out here. And I think we did like a couple months of shows before Miguel had to go back east and ended up not coming back to L.A. And I was like, well, fuck, I want to I want to keep this thing going, but I can't do it by myself. I can't just be one dude rambling to himself. So I was literally just plucking anybody I could. The, the, the manager of the apartment complex that I worked in, I was just like, hey, come in, come sit in with me so I have somebody to talk to. And uh, Raw Dog, Josh Richmond from The Ellis Show, he, he, you know, helped me out a couple of times. And then I reached out to Shuddy. And Shuddy joined over Skype. And well, was- I let's not give it, make it any, it was more like every now and then I would be like, so Kevin, if you ever need me to come on, just let me know. Oh, you were dropping and- hints and I didn't pick up on it. <laughs> uh, I was very much wanting to uh, jump on your coattails. And Shuddy and I have known each other since we were teenagers. So Which, we've got um, a history. We only met because I'm a high school dropout. Which, if you want to hear that story, you should probably listen to the Patreon for this week. Yeah, I was going to try and get into that in a little more detail later, but yeah, we did what some people have been calling the most epic Patreon show of all time last week, uh, and we definitely have a lot of questions that need to be answered on this week's Patreon episode. So <laughs> if you want to take us for a test drive, patreon.com slash mad scientist party hour. But uh, uh, so- Kevin and I met because Dom senior producer, Dom uh, was going to Kutztown and Dom and I were best friends. So I would go hang out in Kutztown with him and Kevin roomed two doors down and they were friends and it, Kevin and I just pretty much clicked instantly because as Kevin has said numerous times, he was a bit of a monster. And as I'm finally coming to grips with after last week, I too was also a monster. Uh, so it kind of, it kind of worked out like, Oh, here's somebody with, with dumber ideas than me that I think sound amazing. And it just was kind of like, Kevin would look at me and he's like, I have this idea. And I'm like, whatever it is. I think you should do it. Yep. Let's do it. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And so even after Kevin left Kutztown, he was still a part of the group and Kevin and I just instantly became friends. And then we got saddled with Jeff. AKA Dookie Dookie Boy the Cocksucker. when Kevin told me that Jeff was joining, I was very concerned that I was going to no longer be a member of the show. There was definitely a lot of instant resentment. It was almost like when you are the franchise quarterback of an organization and they draft a quarterback in the second round. For sure. You know, I yeah. get that reference. You had every right to be concerned, actually, <laughs> because I was working the gears behind you and trying to get Kevin to fire you for years. <laughs> Hey, you know what, Dodd? Uh, Three's a crowd. You know what? <laughs> you should just cut that guy. Just He's dead weight. Bring all these good looks and wit to the fucking podcast. I'd understand you'd be worried about your shine, but <laughs> we made it work. Yeah, so Jeff used to work with Rob Sprantz. And yeah. I was listening to an episode of The Glory Hole one day, and Jeff was a guest on it. And I thought Jeff fucking killed it. So I texted Rob, and I was like, man, that dude Jeff you had on the show today is so fucking funny. And he was like, well, you should, I I should put you two in contact because he's actually moving to Long Beach in like a month or so. So Rob connected us, and Jeff came by for like a trial show just to see, just to come hang for an episode and see what's up. And I feel like there was an instant click, and it's been, you know, the three of us ever since. And it's it's always funny when new people stumble upon the show and they're like, man, show kicks ass. Uh, love Kevin from the Ella show, but man, that guy Jeff, he's a he's he's a he's a piece of shit. Fuck that guy. <laughs> and then a <laughs> month or two later, they're like, all right, I was wrong. Jeff's like my favorite on the show now. <laughs> yeah, it's a slow burn, but I get you every time. He'll well, get you. 
every relationship with Jeff starts off adversarial at first. Yeah, he's like a barnacle on your hiney. He latches yeah. on. And then, then eventually he... you just, you, you can't imagine life without him there. <laughs> I make the contrarian shit work. It's a, it's an uphill battle, but God damn it, I'm good at it. So I hope that answers your question. Tamara? <laughs> Tamara. Tamara. No, it's too Tamara. That I'm sounds, leaning that towards sounds Tamara. Nice. It was T-M-A-R-A, right? No, There's... it wasn't T-M-A. Yeah, T A M A R A. Yes, that would be T A M A R A. So there are several A's in there. Yep, three A's, one M, and R. I'd like to buy a vowel. Starts with a T. Then yes, Tamara. Tamara. I'm gonna say Tamara. I think I said it right. I think we all did. That's, a, that's kind of a hot name. Unless she follows up and checks us next week. Wait, what's the other ones? You guys fucking right, butchered her, my name. Uh, it's Tamara. <laughs> she put it's like an there's like an accent on the A. <laughs> I think in one of the pictures that Dom shared on the Patreon, the band picture, um we have a we had a friend in high school in the band named Tamara that was in the picture, and we called her King, the character from Tekken, because she wore she made she made flare leg pants. And sewed yeah, like leopard so. print in between the seams of the jeans. Man. So Dominic and I started calling her King and she hated it. Because she clearly got the Tekken reference. Yeah. <laughs> Man, that is, uh, you and Dom sometimes have some deep cuts. Yeah, that I was, never even played Tekken. That, that nickname, was all Dom. I just jumped onto it. Uh, that nickname yeah. is in reference to Virtua Fighter. She hated being called King. Uh, yeah, I can see that, I guess. Again, I'm coming to terms with the fact that I was not an okay child, like an okay teenager. I was a fucking yeah. monster. Sound like fucking like a, a stoner metal wolf of Wall Street over there. Except your, I, cuts didn't, down. I didn't smoke weed then. Oh, man, that's you know what? We kind of figured out an issue, maybe. (laughs) (laughs) There, you know, there it is. There it is. We could have probably lessened your terribleness by at least 60% had we just given you an eighth every week. I don't know. I I was smoking a lot of weed back then, and I was still pretty terrible. That's true. Yeah. I even started, like, selling weed for a little bit, but I was smoking so much of it that I was losing money, and I was like, all right, this is a bad idea. (laughs) King Craft. And then the people Man. across the hall from me started, like, I mean, 20 years ago, this was a pretty revolutionary idea, selling pre-rolled blunts for five bucks. I was like, whoa, you guys need to, uh, you guys need to go into like a higher tier business than this. That's a fucking solid idea. Now it's a, like an entire industry out here. Did you, did they like lace it with some baking soda to yield, yield a better profit? No, it wasn't cut. I mean, it was shit weed. We got really shit weed. Like, I was still getting mostly swag back then. And then, you know, if anybody had real nuggets, like, oh, do you hear somebody's got dank? The whole oh, wow. the whole fucking dorm was a buzz. We like, we oh, we can get real nuggets. You don't have to pluck seeds out of it. Dude, I still think weed, and at least upstate New York, is probably pretty bad. I don't think they've came around yet. Really? I mean, not not to, maybe not as terrible as you, what you're describing, but yeah, I think I don't think the weed's great up there still. I mean, like I the guess weed it I was getting probably it, in like it looked like sticks of like beef jerky. It was like flat, wavy, right? Just looks like somebody parked their truck on it and did a burnout. Back in the day, I would buy an ounce and I'd split it up for everybody, and somebody I gave an eighth to once counted. 52 seeds in their eighth. <laughs> oh, well, that's good luck. You're lucky you haven't been murdered. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that like, doesn't 52 seeds weigh an eighth? <laughs> yeah, it, was, <laughs> it was. It was just it was like one. It, it was, was like a awful. fucking peach pit. <laughs> it was like the the Steven Glansberg of your group. You just gave him all like the stems and seeds. Like I, no I literally, I, it was very seedy. <laughs> $20 an eighth weed. It was awful. 
You need like a fucking pick and hammer to like fucking chisel out some, oh, God. <laughs> some flakes and smoke. I can fucking taste it right now. Yeah. Sometimes I get it with with like tree branch sized stems. I don't Jeez. miss those days at all. Yeah, there were times yeah, where I was... bought a bag and like I looked at it and just looked right back at the guy and I was like, fucking seriously? There's like a there's like a piece of firewood in there. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I started way late in the weed game, so I've actually had really good weed luck. Is, but oh yeah, both of you guys started pretty late in the weed game. I was twenty five ish when I really got into it. Man, I was thirteen. No, I was, was twenty one, but it was like the year after I or twenty one or twenty two, but it was like the year after I'd graduated. I know I smoked pot after I graduated college, which. I don't really have that many. Uh, I don't have a, that much of a regret about that. It could have made college better for sure, but I gained so much fucking weight in college that that would have just. I would have been like three hundred and seventy pounds. I'm yeah, if you added the weed munchies on wrestling. top of it. Uh, yeah, you know, I guess it's hard to live really on un, any unhealthier than I did in college. So maybe weed kind of made it that much worse but i'll tell you what whatever. um you know i know jeff gets very angry when i speak ill of weed but if i wasn't a pothead in college i may have had a chance at finishing it <laughs> like I, I probably would have lasted longer than three semesters because i i smoked a ton of weed and i got to the point like towards the end maybe in my final semester i had um a gravity bong built into the side of my bunk bed. So I would wake up and do like start a, my day with a gravity bong hit every day. The, the few friends that I had that gotten thrown out of school or just, well, not really thrown out, just, <clears throat> you know, like weren't, weren't passing and pretty much flunked out were because of weed. That's definitely a thing, you know, as I don't like bashing weed either, but Again, it was probably a good thing I didn't smoke until I was after uh, until I was out of college. Because honestly, like I fucked around a lot in college enough as it was, I skipped a lot of classes. Like I got some pretty good grades, but I had I had an easy major. And if I had to like, if I if I had weed, I just would have been I would have been completely useless and would have flunked out and wasted so much fucking money. So do you guys remember? Do you guys remember that South Park episode where the punchline that they kept hitting was there's a time and place for everything and it's called college? <laughs> I don't remember that one. I've seen every episode, but I don't remember. I'm pretty sure that was a South Park episode and and like they just like everything that came up, they were like, "Kids, there's a time and place for everything. It's called college." So when I was going into college, I thought like I just pictured it was constant animal house and the only way you could party like that lives up to the standard of like epic college partying would be if the schoolwork wasn't all that crazy. So I thought college was going to be a fucking breeze. So I get, you know, I get my classes, um, I show up and I'm immediately partying. And then I, I go to my first day of like intro to math. And they're like, today we are starting with advanced calculus. I'm like, uh, uh, What? I was instantly left behind in every class. I was like, oh, man, Bing Bong School did not fucking prepare me for this. <laughs> I'm just going to go See, back to my room and pound a 40. The, one of the advantages that I had is I went to, to a school real school in college when, well, I mean, I I worked pretty hard in, in high school and stuff like that. So, like, I, I would actually, like, you know, bust my ass if need be. And I did a lot freshman, sophomore year when my GPA was fucking sick. But... I, I was going to college like in the early days of the internet when the internet was sick. When and did you start? What was your first year of college? 2004. Oh yeah, mine was 2000. So like the first, the fr I, literally the first semester of college for me was the first, like that's when Facebook came out. Like I remember mm. all of that, you know what I mean? So like the internet was sick. It was sick for me. And like we had Morpheus so or LimeWire, right? one of the two, and we were just ripping music like social media was happening oh also, we were ripping music too right we still had also, napster though, and kazaa kazaa lime wire and <laughs> i remember pulling shit off of the kutztown network oh yeah kids would 
I got so many viruses. At my college, um, we were able to, we, we had to pick our own classes um, after our, our freshman year, sophomore, junior, and senior year. We had to like figure out our own path to graduate, right? Which is kind of fucked in its own way because people would. Was that high school the way or college? College. Yeah, I had to do that too. And I didn't, I didn't know. I didn't know. And I didn't know what that meant. And I was like, oh, fuck. So we had ratemyprofessor.com. And you would go on ratemyprofessor.com and find out who all the easy professors were for the like the general required classes. Oh, man. And we would this is so we had to take a law class or like a business. It was business law. So we found this teacher, Bolin DeVito. She probably still exists. Hold on. Rate my I'll do Bolin DeVito, rate my professor. She had a perfect score on ratemyprofessor.com. Ravioli she, DeVito? Boland. Boland. B-O-L-A-N-D DeVito, like Danny DeVito. I'm sure she appreciates the shout out. <laughs> so in the first, like either week or the first, the very first class, she made it a point to ask for a perfect score, five out of five and rate my professor. Like that's what she wanted. She right? wanted to be known she, as the as the Breeze professor? Yep. She gave us the answers to the test, the the week of the test. Did you just and fuck like, this professor over royally? What do you mean? Is that something? Are you like not supposed to do that? She, I don't, I don't know. It worked <laughs> for her. Like again, I don't know. This is this is how long? Sixteen years ago now. So like, if she still is Was doing she older it, or, back then. All right, Joyce Boland DeVito. All right, hold on. I'm I'm finding her rate my professor dot com right oh now. Oh my god, uh, profile. So, I mean, she's on the internet. What do you want me to do? This is like, it's, I'm not, just because she has the only fans and I'm shouting it out doesn't mean like I'm fucked here. Like she's has the Ram Professor. Anyways, so the final, dude, the final was we would watch my cousin Vinny. She would give us a test about my cousin Vinny, and she was <laughs> like, like throughout us watching my cousin Vinny, she was like, "Yeah, this is pretty much trial law." <laughs> wow, you got like the Michael Scott of college professors. That's awesome. Yeah, she, she's still she, a professor at St. John's. Yeah, yeah. What's her? My my. Uh, it, I don't know. Like, the I clicked rate my professors like, is not working, but I did find yeah, her. Yeah, mine either success story on St. John's university website. So we would do shit. I did shit like that, Kevin. Like I couldn't, Yeah, I didn't have the resources. I didn't, I went into college so fucking blind. I had no idea what was about to hit me. And I, I didn't know about the signing up for your classes stuff. I was like, wait a second. That's a thing. I have to do that. Another thing I was told at Bing Bong school, there were no, foreign language courses at my high school and they said since you all have learning disabilities we have a thing worked out where we contact the college you get into and they like uh they give you a a pass because i think pretty much every college requires you to do a foreign language or something to graduate and they were like we we get we get a thing where you can bypass that so when i when I was like sitting down with somebody and I went fucking late, there were no good classes left. They were like, all right, so what foreign language are you going to take? I'm like, Oh, I, I, I was told, uh, I was told I don't, I don't have to do that because uh, I have a learning disability. And they're like, Oh, well, <laughs> whoever told you that is a moron. You have to take a foreign language here. And I was like, Oh, so I was like, you know what? I really like Rammstein. I'll take German. <laughs> <laughs> fucking big mistake. Failed that. Um, yeah. And like I said, I signed up for like a math class that was supposed to be like math one, math one Oh one. Here's the, here's the first step. And the first day this dude was throwing fucking squiggly lines up on the, on the chalkboard. I had never seen in my life. Like, what the fuck is that thing? Yeah. So failed that. And then I, I took an English course. Um, not trying to be a you dick just- here, but English teacher was Chinese and Clearly had not been speaking English very long. Couldn't understand him. Failed that. Uh, signed up for a like theater a class. Theater dumb teacher was... babe in the woods. I, I, yeah, I was a lost fucking bing boing at sea. Theater class yeah, was dude. too fucking weird for me. Stop going to that. I, it was... 
it was an epic failure. My, my college excursion was an epic failure. The best thing to come out of it was uh, the friends I made. You know, now we have MSPH with Shuddy. And, you know, and Dom and Mr. Ski. I, there's still a whole bunch of people that, you know, I was only in the vicinity of for three semesters professionally. Uh, but I'm, I'm still friends with to this day. But I, yeah. 20 years later. Woo! Oh, boy, did I blow it. That was fucking embarrassing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, all I got out of college is bitch ass Paul. <laughs> uh, I did, speaking of Dom, I did just get a text from him announcing that there is some breaking news. We have a breaking news button? Yes. Really? I emailed it to you. Oh. Remember, I made a sound clip. That's why this was all supposed to, I told him to text you. All right. So then there was no, so then you could just hit the drop. Well, as uh, we just discussed, Shuddy, I am pretty stupid. And there are no email attachments that say breaking news in my Gmail. Kevin. Can Maybe you do Shuddy's it? Shuddy's a stupid one. Can you do it, You've Shuddy? played it two times before on the podcast. Maybe if I search you- for breaking Shuddy. It's literally breaking news. It was sent on October 19th, 2020 at 7.05 p.m. It's not in here. I don't believe you, Shuddy. Forward it to me again, and it'll be at the top of my inbox. There we go. Teamwork. Forward it one more time, pussy. Yeah, I dare you. (laughs) One more time, pussy. Just try it. Just forward it. You know, unless you're too much of a pussy. Pussy, forward it. I dare you. Get it, pussy. A double dog dare you. Kevin, open it, you pussy. I'm fucking... I'm refreshing. All right. Double Refresh it faster, you fucking pussy. Yeah. Shuddy, are you going to send it or what? Jesus Christ. Yeah, Shuddy. Just so everybody knows. I'm just like... It just I'm in a dark room swinging a knife right now. Now now there's an even bigger gaping hole in the in the YouTube video. Hey, if you're one of the five people watching this on YouTube, it's my fault. <laughs> Shuddy boy's a fucking idiot. Yeah, and he just shared my fucking YouTube- email. I think all like I would say probably ninety percent of our thirty YouTube viewers, so that would make twenty seven, already have your email. I also put my email. It's not like I didn't put my email there too. It's fine if you shoot yourself in the foot, just don't shoot my foot. All right, my put my email up. Fuck it. I'll take no. all the emails. See, you say, oh, ah. See, now I'm gonna be I'm gonna be Captain Stupid Pants, and I'm gonna forget to cut that out, and I'm gonna fucking upload it. <laughs> That's how this is gonna play out. Okay. <laughs> Rely on my post-it notes. Cut out <laughs> stupid. Are you gonna do like a stupid. cool fade or slide transition, or are you just gonna? It's just gonna be like a a skip. Uh, I mean. I'll try a, a little transition whoosh. This is the first time we've ever had to chop something out in the months that we since we've started doing. Uh, and we all thought it was going to be Jeff. We all, we, I, we we all thought we were going to have to cut something out because of Jeff. It's that like was, you read my mind. That was, was exactly what I was going to say. Actually, we had numerous conversations where it was like yeah. Jeff. Now that we're on YouTube, you really need to watch it because we can't cut shit. And it was me. Truth be told, Puminati, I was there was conversation conversations where I was pretty offended that <laughs> over the over over the 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 talk that I couldn't keep it bottled up or not uh, not put my best foot forward. But yep. look at that! All right, well, hey, the uh, the intro made it. Mad you- scientist party hour. Breaking news with Shudder. MSPH Wrestling 7 Untitled Event name to be determined uh, Will take place Saturday, January 30th 8pm Eastern On Dom's Twitch channel Twitch.tv Slash DomV311 January 30th Mark your calendars, friends For When's MLK Those of day? you that are new, uh, ever since we've known, or Kevin's known Dom, uh, 
and since the advent of wrestling games where you can create characters, Dom's created us and uh, made events out of pitting computer version uh, of us against each other. And we've had, uh, it started with the main, with COVID, Dom started doing them on his Twitch channel and it's turned into this huge thing where uh, lots of Puminati are involved and it just becomes, we all hang out, we do a Zoom and shoot the shit. That was a really, why would you let me explain that? You're better at it than I you am. You took the bull by the horns. I was very impressed with how it was going. And then you yeah. limp dicked it at the end there. <laughs> I, <laughs> you see, I think you that see announcement the, that announcement was sponsored by Shuddy Boy's Volcano. You know, I, let's shift the blame here. Not put this so much on your shoulder, Shuddy. We need to get a theme for this event. That's oh, I'm sure. Don, I, I don't think. I know I, he's working on it. I was I, hoping. We could do maybe like a Valentine's, like Valentine's Day massacre theme, but that would push it back a couple weeks. Uh, I'm sure Dom will have. I was not even expecting this until just before we sat down to record where he said, I'm emailing the event information. So I didn't even know that one was being planned. How long did you have to scroll through that email? It's probably like fucking war and peace, it's, right? It's not. It's not. He's taken your criticisms to heart. You really offended Dom, Jeff. Me, I, I don't. I, it's Kevin that's criticizing him. I love the lengthy. <laughs> no, it, no it's Jeff. Jeff. Uh, Jeff did it. This is, this is just. There is. I'm sure there will be more. Uh, I'll read every fucking word he writes. So we have some new signees to MSPH Wrestling. Uh, we've got Fonzo making his debut. No oh, shit. That's uh, crazy. The Great Poudini. Oh, is he gonna? That's a shame that you can't. Dom hasn't figured out a way to really hack the mainframe so we can have diarrhea shooting out of his ass. And Grogu. All right. Uh, the opening contest will. Wait be... a second. All right. Do you know? Who... I don't know who Grogu is. My bad. Baby Yoda. Come on, Jeff. Okay. Get in the zeitgeist gotcha. here. Come on, gotcha. Jeff. Sorry. Sorry. Uh. The opening contest will be a hair versus hair versus hair triple threat match for the hardcore championship featuring ginger and juice versus Shawnee Killface, AKA don't die versus the reigning champion, Jeff Clark. Mm. Winner gets the championship belt. The losers shave their head and have to be bald for the next event in real life. Wait yeah. a second, you you cut out on me. What did you say? <laughs> if no, you I'm lose, serious. You if really you lose this cut match, out. Jeff, you have to shave your head. Whoever loses the match shaves their head. The two superstars who don't win the belt at the end of the match get their heads shaved and will be bald at the next event. In is this life. in the video game? This is a thing? Real life. And you have to chop your penis off. Okay, all right. Well, now I know you're lying. If you could, You could have strung that along. And you really had me for a second. All right, I was if joking. Gonna... I was joking about the penis thing. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, if we're doing scalps, I'm down to put scalps in the line. Uh, there you have it. The next Damn match it. My is... internet keeps fucking up. Uh, the is a triple threat tornado tag team elimination match for the MSPH tag team championships, featuring Sticks and Stone, who which is Arts and the Mighty Boognish. Versus Fonzo and Grogu versus Los Lamos. Uh, and if the Los Lamos lose the belts, they must unmask. And then everybody who's going to know who they are. <laughs> uh, then here's the uh, this is the most surprising match of the initial announcement. It's a retirement match. Loser loses his contract to MSPH Wrestling in a no hold barred falls count anywhere. Jesus. That's some high stakes. Banishment? Banishment. And it is Spat versus Woody from Toy Story. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Spat talked trash on Woody at MSPH Wrestling 6 and wouldn't allow him to enter the Royal Rumble which set Woody into a frenzy hell-bent on revenge. 
Yikes. All right, what's the next one? And the How last many- one we have to announce is a two out of three falls table match for the Undisputed World Heavyweight Championship, which is the first superstar to put their opponent through a table twice wins. Uh, Big Sexy is cashing in his Money in the Bank briefcase versus Neon, Kevin Kraft, who currently holds the belt. Ooh, come and get it. I'm going to eat your butt. So I have to defend my my belt in a triple threat match? Yep, against Ginger and Don't Die. That's fucking horse shit. I'm going to email the commissioner after this. If I, if oh, I Jeff needs to talk to the manager. What a surprise. <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah, exactly. I'm going Karen here. I'm going to literally, I'm going to, I'm going to take this to the top of the chain here in MSP wrestling. But not only I are success- you fighting for your belt, you're fighting for your hair. Yeah. My luscious lock. Yeah. And you're going to have to if shave I- your taco meat too. Okay. That's, that's <laughs> none of the rules. That's not the fine print. <laughs> if, I successfully defend my title. I want all my matches from here on out to be one-on-one matches. Jeff, you do realize that you are um, a champion. hardcore, hardcore champion, champion, which is like the lowest championship belt. Like you are the bottom According to who? of everybody the wrestling championship higher. People talk about it all the time when you're not around. That you're the bitch ass champion. Everyone. All and right, that's um, the last one. Excellent. January 30th, friends. Uh, okay. Got a few reviews. You guys watch anything? Uh, no. I've been watching some weird shit lately. And I, I had heard about this movie when it got announced. And its release completely went under the radar. Jeff, are you familiar with jujitsu? I know I've seen this title before. It was billed as a Nicolas Cage sci-fi martial arts alien movie. Which, like, okay. I, 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 I'm, I'm supporting Nick Cage through this weird zany phase he's in right now where he just takes any script that's thrown at him. And this sounded just completely ridiculous. So when I saw that it was actually out, I rented it on Prime. Uh, it, it, it was a bummer. It was, I was hoping it was going to be along the lines of like Troll 2 or The Room or Samurai Cop, where it's just so awful you can't stop laughing. But it was just awful in all the wrong ways. It was barely even a Nick Cage movie. He's not even really in it for the first 40 minutes. And the the first half of the movie is some dude I've never seen before, and he's like an army guy, I guess. And there's lots of just army fighting. And, uh, oh, uh, Ong Bak guy, Tony Ja is in it. And there's endless action. Like, toward, like, the second half of the movie is basically just one long fight scene with different people getting subbed in, but... It was just very repetitive. They didn't give Tony Ja any cool stuff. He wasn't doing any real Ong Bak shit. It, uh, the story was, if I even followed it correctly, this alien came to Earth forever ago and gifted us jujitsu. So this alien trained people in jujitsu and then it spread throughout the world and now the world has jujitsu. But every six yeah. years... A comet comes to Earth, and then nine people have to fight the alien. And if they don't, he destroys all life on Earth. Are you with me like, so far? Yeah, is it an octagon fight? Him? Like, what's the what's the? I couldn't even get a grip on that. The venue. I don't know. I think it's yeah. anywhere or like his weird alien temple. But yeah, is it like the the top of that waterfall, like in Black Panther? That was a pretty that was a pretty sweet fighting spot. It was. Um, this this was not. They it seemed to move in different places. The rules seemed to change when they actually do engage the alien. Um, Seems sometimes pretty offensive to Brazilian people. Didn't they in, invent jujitsu? I I mean they for sure invented Brazilian jujitsu. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, who else? Also, could have been? I'm not you know the world's leading authority on martial arts, but I can sort of spot styles and shit. 
And there's barely any fucking jujitsu in the movie. Jujitsu is mostly on the ground wrestling and locking people up moves. This had more kung fu, and there was a little bit of Muay Thai worked in with Tony Ja, but rarely any actual jujitsu going down, which was very silly. A lot of striking. Lots of striking, lots of weapons and stuff. Uh, very, very bad CG. Like, there was gunfights and stuff, and the bullet whizzing and the bullet marks were CG. When people were fighting and getting punched in the st- in the chest and stuff, CG dust came out. It's like, what What the fuck? I, I, Instead I, of blood? This sounds I know, terrible. I know Nick Cage is, you know, he made some very bad... Uh, financial decisions and bought some castles and dinosaur bones and shit. And now he's just like, fuck, I need to be constantly working. But I can't imagine the paycheck for jujitsu was all that much. Like, I feel like that was a waste of his time. He probably could have done a different goofy movie and gotten maybe a higher paycheck out of it. I'm, I'm so <laughs> flabbergasted by this. Do you think, do you ever think Nick Cage does two movies in the same day? <laughs> Yeah, he's doing like the double shift. Like he does twelve hours on the set of jujitsu, and then drives to a different movie set. Yeah, and then he shows up back to jujitsu in the previous movie's costume. Like, all right, I'm ready to be a Victorian inventor. Like, ah, dude, wrong movie. Nick Cage has fucking hacked the human experience, and he gets twenty eight hours out of his day. He hasn't slept in six years. Yeah. He's the most Mexican guy in Hollywood. Fucking he's, Nick Cage. He's made four thousand <laughs> movies since, but not a wink of sleep. No, sleeping is for pussies, as Nick Cage would probably say. It sure is. <laughs> Fucking I, man, I think I we need to I get Shuddy Boy. Right we need to get Shuddy Boy Madden again. Like he's taking he's, work calls in the Easter egg. He's walked off like three times now. I like. I like his hack. On what he previously said of he's going to give us his full undivided attention. <laughs> because instead of breaking that policy, he in his head just walks away and he thinks, <laughs> I don't have to give you. It, it's only while I'm in front of the camera. Shuddy, are we, are we distracting you? No, the ferret was making a ton of racket. So I thought she needed water. So I was going to try and get her to stop, but it wasn't. No, ferret duty. Sorry. I um, all I could hear was her at the water bottle, and I was trying to make it stop. No, we. I was just it. saying you don't have you only have to give us your full undivided attention when you're on camera. <laughs> <laughs> so when you go off, you could do whatever. Sorry. So the the alien that Nick Cage and all these weird fighters have to fight yeah. looks like Predator and Diesel mixed with a Power Ranger character. Like he's just in like a weird alien suit. You can't really kill him. He like if you slice him across the chest, it instantly heals. He has his face is like right down the center of it is like a foggy, cloudy, almost space helmet looking thing that only goes down some of the middle. And about thirty times throughout the final fight scene, the the mist in it clears up a little bit and you see this like smush faced lizard man with red eyes and he's like Bleh. and it it's almost like the first time they did it, like, here's the big reveal. You get to see the alien's mushed-up lizard face. But they do it 50 more times to zero effect. It's, it's, it's fucking bizarre, and not bizarre That's, in the fun way. I, if they would have asked for my advice, the writer, I would have said that instead of the alien smushed-up alien face, Nick Cage. You make it Nick Cage's face. And he's already he, doing two movies at the same time, Jeff. How many characters can you play? <laughs> I mean, if you're going to pay him for all the characters, he'll do all of them, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Dude, and not only does he look like the Predator a little bit, but he also can do active invisible camouflage and sees in heat vision. They just fucking thought nobody would notice. Like, oh yeah, we just straight up ripped off the Predator for this movie called Jiu-Jitsu where people fight Kung Fu. And Nick Cage is only in it, uh, like, I don't know, 20 minutes combined screen time? Very, very strange, strange, strange thing. I I was excited that this was going to be a very stupid movie that I could have a lot of fun laughing at, and it was just, it was just fucking boring. 
It sucks. It kind of it sounds kind of sad. Makes you feel bad for Nick Cage. Like, dude. He looks like he had fun with it. Okay, all right. He always looks <laughs> like he's having fun. It's like fucking a 400-pound chick and just coming out flexing. Like, oh, well, I mean, are we going to make fun of him? I did it, guys. I did it. <laughs> just knock that pussy out of the park. Oh, man. Like, all right, Nick. Cool. <laughs> so, yeah, I can't, I can't in good conscience suck more than a dick and a half for this movie. <laughs> I heard uh I heard our movie rating system came out like accidentally slipped up in the Ellis show. It did. Someone yeah. was telling me. <laughs> we did we reviewed we did an in-depth review of Speed on the Ellis show Patreon and I ended it by saying it had been a very long time since I had seen Speed. I saw it like a handful of times when I was younger around when it came out. And it's been just been a gigantic Speed dry spell ever since. So, and I, I like it's it's so ingrained in my head at this point that I I said it without thinking. I was like, I, I speed still holds up. I'll suck four and a half speed dicks. And everybody was like, "What the fuck are you talking about?" <laughs> yes, yes. So then I had to like explain it. Like, oh yeah, that's how we review things on my podcast. We suck dicks. <laughs> I I want to I want to hear. Did they have questions or is, did they just... No, I explained it. I was like, yeah, you know, if one of us sees John Wick, we'll be like, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll suck um, four out of five John Wick dicks. And they're like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> it I mean, fits in the Ellis universe as well. It does, yeah. Like, I, I don't feel like anybody's lost on it. You might question why we're sucking dicks for the rating system, but I don't think anybody's lost in the process. I want to hear a story of someone going on like a first or second date to a movie <laughs> with a girl <laughs> and, and and then using the msph dick rating scale uh in the in the post movie little conference or yeah. asking her so how many dicks would you suck for that movie She's like <laughs> what yeah. why do you think i'm how sucking many... your dick yeah <laughs> yeah how many avengers two dicks would you suck <laughs> Oh man. Um I also I've been watching a lot of foreign movies lately. Nerd. I know. Uh, well, this pussy. one I know you two will be out, but it's it's a movie from somebody that we did an entire MSPH episode basically filleting, and that is the great Mads Mickelson. So he put out a new movie called Another Round that I've been seeing getting really good reviews. So I was just like, oh, fuck it. I'll check that out. I love I love me some Mads. And right when it started, the opening credits were in Danish. And I was like, oh, shit. But <laughs> so, yeah, the whole movie's in Danish with English subtitles. But they got uh, their own language. Shit. Yeah, that's why that's <laughs> yeah, why Mads has an accent. Not their own, it's not just a baked good. Yeah. Wait a second. You can eat their language. Wait. Denmark. Yeah. Yeah. Good okay. job. <laughs> All right, cool. Job. Cool. So the movie just, um, right. focuses on like these these four dudes who are friends. They're middle aged. They're all teachers, and they're kind of in a rut. Mads Mikkelsen, it, it might be like in the biggest rut. Like his marriage is kind of dead. His professional life is kind of dead, and he's just sort of like going through the motions. And he goes out. Been to, there, buddy. He goes out to dinner with his with his homies for a birthday. And he's just like, yeah, I got to get home tonight. I'm not really drinking tonight. And the other guys are like, oh, well, sucks to be you. We came here to party. And they're at kind of like a fancier restaurant. And the waiter comes out. And the way this guy was describing the drinks that they were going to have, it fucking, it made me want to drink. Like, if you're, if you're listening to this and you're, like, in recovery or you're going to watch it with somebody in, in recovery, I would, I would not recommend it. It, it very much glamorizes drinking. Uh, but... This dude comes out and he's like, this is a uh, bottle of vodka that would be the vodka to the czars. This is the king of vodkas, and we serve it chilled, so the water particles in it are slightly frozen, which gives it a... Like, this guy's just going off. He's just like a fucking booze sommelier. And then they're they're taking a sip, and everybody at the table is just like, oh, my God. Oh, that's excellent. And then they bring out a beer, and they, they sip that, and they're like, oh, that's the best beer. And then dude pours a glass of wine and he's describing the wine and dude my the way my mouth was fucking like salivating 
just reading the subtitles of what they were saying. And Mads cracks, and he's like, yeah, pour me one. And he starts taking a sip, takes a little sip, and he's just like, oh, and chugs it. And then they're just like in beast mode, just drinking everything. And while they're just getting hammered, one of the guys starts talking about this dude who has a theory that humans are born with a blood alcohol deficiency of 0.05%. So he's basically just like, people are at their happiness when they have a slight buzz. And they were like, we should give this a shot. Like, we're all kind of just in a rut. We're bummed out. Let's just sneak drinks all day and just maintain a blood alcohol content of 0.05%. And it it starts off great. Like, Mads is all fucking happy and cheery and shit, and he's teaching his class, and then he sneaks off, and he's, like, chugging out of a flask. These motherfuckers get so into it, they buy breathalyzers, and they're, like, in the bathroom stall blowing into a breathalyzer to make sure they're maintaining their blood alcohol content. So microdosing with alcohol. Yeah. And so is it... Is it alcoholism if you never get like above the legal limit? Well, they since they're like teachers and and dorks and stuff, they 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 you know they catalog it like they they take notes and they write essays and they document the experience as they go, and that it's brought up very early. Like, doesn't it just mean we're alcoholics? But like they they start hiding bottles of booze around the school, and uh, it's. If you can handle the subtitles, I thought it was fucking great. I loved it. Mads was awesome. I've never seen him do a movie in his, you know, native language. But uh, it was, it was fucking great. I loved it. Nice, oh, I gotta man. suck dicks. I gotta suck some dicks. Sorry. Um, yeah, how many Mads Mickelson dicks are you sucking? <laughs> let me check. Let me consult with my letterbox D. I've watched. I've watched a lot of movies this past week. That's good. I'm the type of guy that would give two different scores. One that's different from my Letterbox D and then one on MSPH because I'm a dick. I, I gave I sucked four and a half dicks. Oh. It's a solid watch. It was on pace to well, be a five Danish dicker. Bukaki. But it gets it does get like a little a little sad and there's some downer moments and I was like, ah, oh, this was this was pretty fun up until now. I, I, I know I Jeff and Shuddy do... aren't going to give it a shot because they don't fuck nope. with subtitles. But I know people in our audience aren't as boorish as you two. I don't think that's fair. I do subtitles once every couple months. I did. I reviewed, was it hashtag alive or just alive? I reviewed alive. Oh, yeah. I did that in all the subtitles. The Korean every zombie Every now and movie. then I'm down. Um, <laughs> I tried to watch Lupin, however. Lupin? And... Do you know what that is? No. It's a Netflix original series. It's French. And it's about like a, uh, just like a French con man or thief. And he's like, I don't know. It's, it's a series about him and him trying to pull off grifts or, or thieveries, whatever. But it only got maybe like a half an hour worth of play in the Clark compound before we, we threw it off one of the three TVs. Oh, so it was um, you and your brothers watching it. Yeah. So Bill is, is would, would you concede that Bill is like the cinephile of the family? For sure. Cheech tries to keep up and he's close at this point. They watch a lot of movies, both of them, but Bill is still out of them. And Bill can handle some, you know, artsy fartsy stuff. It doesn't have to be like Armageddon every night. Yeah, he goes through phases. I think he's in like a real artsy fartsy phase right now. But that wasn't this wasn't supposed to be an artsy fartsy movie. It was just French. It was a French like like thriller. Um They got any crime. titties in that? What's up? No titties. Not in the thirty minutes that we watched, twenty minutes that we watched. I know French people like being nude. Yeah. If there was nudity up front, I probably would have kept watching it. But no, they and f- so for whatever reason, the Netflix stream that we clicked into had it dubbed instead of subtitled. So there was no subtitles. And, but I didn't know that the movie was set in France. Like for the first, like, I don't know, two minutes, three minutes. (laughs) Am I high? Are these guys, these guys mouths moving all weird. 
<laughs> yeah, they're doing a bunch of exterior shots, and they had one of them of the Louvre, and clearly the countryside of France, right? And, but I'm like, and they're like, is this French? I'm like, no, it's not French. It just might be set in France, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> and after like a few minutes of watching them talk, like eventually, like I see Cheech like side eyeing me. He's like, this is French. Like, all right, yeah, apparently this is everybody's looking to wasn't... Jeff for the for the putter throw. Oh boy. Uh, we're making <laughs> yeah, Jeff this... watch something French. This fuck no, no, they I was making them watch the French shit oh, because I was okay. like, I wanted to put on Lupin. I wanted to watch something that I can review for MSPH. Oh Lupin. It's been, it's been wall to wall sports. I've heard Lupin in my head somewhere in my network. I don't know look if this it's shit one up. of the Slack one of the Slack channels or one of the Discord channels. How or do you one spell this Lupin? Um, L-U-P-I-N. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. It's um, 2021 listed on IMDb. Yeah. Just came out like this week, obviously. <laughs> wow, it's got really good reviews too. But you guys, uh, it didn't get you guys, huh? Yeah, maybe I should maybe I should try it with subtitles. I think what I learned is that I prefer subtitles and dub dub over voices because it was once I figured it out, it was just too distracting. And knowing that they were, you know, French talking like gangsters in in an American accent, but it was dubbed over, it was just like, you know what? I'm not buying into this. I can't I can't do this. Oh, you can't intimidate me, Frenchman. You can't cut that asteroid in half. I'm not buying that. So, <laughs> I, uh, yeah, 20 minutes I was out. But so if we're going off the dick rating scale, that means you gave Lupin blue balls. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was gonna say micro dick. You, I didn't even get that far. You started I, fucking around with some dick, and then you just let it go. Like ah, uh, oh, you're on your own, Lupin. You can actually, finish yourself I think, off. I think we went out and like went out to coffee. And there was a chance that I could have took Lupin home and started blowing him. And I was like, you know what? I'm good with my coffee. I'm out of here, Lupin. You're fucking French. You're not coming over. I'm not sucking your dick. No, you got uh, French so, my asshole. But it's getting good reviews. So I might circle back because I like the, you know, I like the the heist, like it being a heist series. Okay. Like I like heist stories and them doing consecutive heist stories could be cool. You could, I could see that being like something I enjoy. So I might go back and do it with subtitles. And the other thing yeah, that I not? watched I started this morning, actually. Sorry. What was that? Nothing. Go ahead. The other thing that I started watching based on Shuddy's recommendation, Ted Lasso on Apple TV, um, which with Jason Sudeikis, it's about the, uh, D2 co- uh, college football coach that uh, gets hired out of the blue by uh, the new manager or the new owner of a popular English soccer team. And he moves over to England with his assistant coach and no one takes him seriously. Not the, not the press, not the, not his team, not the people that are surrounding the team and everyone just clowns on him for being a fucking American blunt up. Uh, I almost call him Blumpkin. <laughs> American, <laughs> an American country bumpkin. From That's fucking... weird. He's always getting his cock sucked while he's taking shits. I don't know. Weird angle for a he's show. From... The character is from Kansas. I don't know if that's a Kansas <laughs> accent, but it's a Southern accent. And he's just got his vibe. I would like it to be raunchier than it is or a little more vulgar than it is. But his vibe is just upbeat. <laughs> Not enough Blumpkins. Well, a upbeat football coach nauseatingly and positive about everything about everything and there is like there are, that is a type of football coach some football coaches are just like assholes like they're almost like fucking drill sergeants and then some of them are just like obnoxiously upbeat <laughs> like there's this one guy that coached in me and Shuddy's division named Jason Garrett and he's like considered to be like one of the most positive dudes ever. They call him the clapper because like, like th- many times throughout the game, they'll just they'll just pan to him on the sideline. He's just clapping. He's just clapping like all trying to ri- uh, rally his team or rile his team up. Oh, he's a happy and guy. Kind of, I'm jealous of that. Right. I wish no, I was a clapper. 
so the guy got fired, right? And after after like ten years of of underperforming, he got fired, and then immediately gets hired. Like that's the kind of guy where, yeah, people make fun of him for being overly positive, but he can make fun of everyone else because he's overly employed all the time. Like no, like every people always want that guy around. So yeah, you can suck his nice dick, haters. Yeah. So Jason Sudeikis gives off that vibe. Like they are dogging him. Like they are openly being dicks to him. And he's just like trying to kill them with kindness. And it's cool. And I I mean, because I'm into sports and I'm into football and like just the concept of a football coach, not knowing anything about soccer, taking over a soccer team is hilarious to me. And it's definitely like a strong enough premise to keep me watching the entire season. And they're, clean short cuts every episode is like 30 minutes long so i like, I like it i do like ted lasso i've watched three and a half episodes so far shuddy how many are in the on the season again i think there are eight okay hey parker and miles damn it i'm gonna get it right miles hey miles um oh hi ferret <laughs> <laughs> i like ted lasso so far i'm not at a position where i'm gonna suck any ted lasso dicks because i'll do that after i'm done watching the series which will definitely be by next week i'll make sure to is it based on a real man no 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 okay. no <laughs> that would go terribly for him one of the like the themes or one of the, like the subplots of the story is him having to deal with the sports media and i've heard this before but supposedly like the sports media in america is pretty intense supposedly it is nothing like it is dog shit compared to the uh, European soccer media. Supposedly the European soccer media is nuts. And well, yeah, having, I mean, they, they, they are like, they try to assassinate their players when they underperform and shit. Right. Like aren't, aren't European know. soccer fans like that rabid? No, that was South America. What you're referring to. Oh, yeah. I, don't, I don't even know what I'm referring to. I just heard that like, but yes, yeah, soccer fans are typically rabid. Yeah. yeah well, Pop, the story that you both are seemingly infer- referring to is Pablo Escobar had someone from the Colombian national team murdered. When oh, he... oh, I, I didn't even know that, that was. I, well, I was... there's that, and there's also in the '96 World Cup, I believe, a Colombian player. I believe it Not... was I scored it was... an own goal and got multiple death threats. I thought people like if if you like if you play for I don't know here's me parroting words I don't understand if you play for Liverpool and you have a bad game you need like security detail because the people that live in Liverpool will try to hunt you down and and beat you to death. No. Okay. I I wouldn't confirm that. <laughs> right. I know they're intense, <laughs> but I mean that's like. That's too much? To, the way that I would describe it that you might somewhat understand is I would say they were like 150% of a Philadelphia Eagles fan. Oh, like, Philadelphia oh, Eagles fans are not chill. Like They're not. They're, they're close to too much. I can tolerate them, and I love the passion. Soccer fans <laughs> and the soccer press is really, really not chill. Gotcha. All right. So – him dealing with it is interesting and him dealing with the, like the team, like shitting on him is funny. I just wish that he would go nuts. and like, just, I I'm waiting for that episode. I'm, I'm thinking it's going to happen or he's just going to tear into these guys for sucking ass because the joke is on him. The whole first, the first three episodes. Cause it's like, you're a fucking football coach. What do you know about soccer? And I'm just waiting for him to like flip it back on him. Well, if you think I'm a joke for being hired, Imagine how the owner feels about how good you guys are at soccer. You know what I mean? But I'm hoping he gets to that point. You don't um, get what I'm saying? No. Too much <laughs> like, sports ins and outs. You're, yeah. Um, whatever. I'm, I'm sure, not sucking any lasso dicks right now. I, I've got one more thing that I want to throw out. And it's just because I've, it's so weird. It might spawn its own discussion. But like I said, I've been watching a lot of foreign movies lately and i was actually talking to our homie steve brandano about this because he's the one that turned me on to that letterbox d app and it's now become such a powerful force in my life that it's like 
I'm getting sucked into movie wormholes and it's swaying my movie watching habits and making me watch more of them. I stumbled upon this movie and I think I even heard somebody mention it on an episode of Doug Loves Movies, so you might be able to help me out, Shuddy. There's this movie called Tom Popo. And it's a Japanese movie from 85 that's billed as a ramen western. And it's only a western in the sense where, I mean, it takes place in 1985, Tokyo. But it's it's got like a theme that could be interpreted as a western, I guess. I don't know. It's... It's fucking bizarre. It's like these guys stumble upon a ramen shop one night and the this this you know nice lady that runs the shop is kind of on hard times and her ramen sort of sucks ass. And these dudes are like ramen snobs. And they they agree to help her train her to be like a ramen sensei and make her like the best noodle shop around. But it it goes off the beaten path in like a pulp fictiony kind of way where it just explores all these other weird shorter stories and they all involve food and they're all so fucking weird. It's it's like an 80s foodie movie before foodie was even like a mainstream thing. It's 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 almost like a love letter to Japanese food. But I found it just fascinating. It was so bizarre, but as somebody who loves ramen, it's it's so fucking strange. It gets to a point they have a food themed sex scene where these people just have weird sex where they do weird shit with food. And it doesn't really play into the main narrative of it. It's just here's some weird food sex. Enjoy. Do they like does the guy lather her up with hoisin sauce and lick it off? He she like goes like this with her lips, mouth lips, but she does like the two finger spread <laughs> thing like it's pussy lips. And then like honey pours down it sideways and he's just like <laughs> like cunnilingusing the honey dripping off her face lips. And then they That's take oral gruel. <laughs> <laughs> it's so fucking weird. Then he she like dips her titty in fla- a bowl of flour and he sucks her flour titty. And then they put live prawns in this little bowl that I think has soy sauce in it and presses it against her nude tummy. And then the thing is like struggling and flipping around and she's just like, <laughs> giggling. And then it just cuts back to these dudes training this lady on how to make ramen. It's called Tom Popo? Yeah. T- is that one word? T A M P O P O. It's on HBO Max. And this is in subtitles or no? It yeah, it's subtitles. Do you get to see is there any nudity? There's titties, yeah. Dude, the movie ends with when with they titties. when they roll the credit, it's like a, a wide shot of a park and you see a woman on a bench and it just slowly zooms in for the entirety of the credits and she's breastfeeding a baby. And by the time the credits are done, the camera is that zoomed in on just the baby sucking her titty. It's That's so, not cool. It's so fucking weird. That sounds yeah. very fucking bizarre. And, uh, That's but like too artsy. It's got Ken Watanabe in it, who I guess would be the most recognizable actor in it. Is he? Was he in Batman Begins? <sighs> <coughs> oh, excuse me. He's the he was in yeah Batman Begins, Inception, uh, Last See, Samurai. No, that's Liam Neeson. Oh wait, no, I'm tripping. I mean, Ra's al Ghul's boss. I think so. He's the fake Ra's al Ghul. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Not his boss. Yeah. For sure. But it's weird seeing a young him in such a a strange movie. But like, I don't know. If you like Japanese food. It's a very interesting journey through Japanese food. It'll be one of the weirdest movies you'll ever see. Um, but I don't know I, I enjoyed it very much. I thought it was great. It's it's weird because um, 
I like I found it just in a uh, you know a letterbox D wormhole, and it led me to that. And I was like, wow, I think I remember somebody talking about that on Doug Loves Movies. And then it's on HBO Max because HBO Max has the Criterion channel, and there's a Criterion edition of Tom Popo. And it, it, I need to do further investigation because if HBO Max has every movie that's got a Criterion release, that's that's fucking epic. That's 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 a a, a massive selling point. So I'm gonna I'm gonna look further oh. into that, but. I don't know if any of that weird shit that I just belched out to you sounds intriguing at all. Watch no. Tom Popo on HBO Max. <laughs> I'm more of a, f- a pho fan than I am ramen. So, yeah, I prefer my, ramen to pho. That's my heart out. Me too. Yeah. I wonder. I wonder how po- uh, how pho pho versus ramen polls in the Puminati. I'm gonna put that into Discord. I got to imagine ramen is more popular. You're just saying that because you like it more, but do you know that? Do I you? You feel don't. like more people know what ramen is than know what pho is. Let alone like people mm. that have tasted both and have a preference one way or the other. You know what though? This is interesting. Me and Twisted Texan talking about this in a happy hour and we have a bunch of Texans I believe in the Puminati. There's a lot of Vietnamese in Texas, and there's a lot of Vietnamese food in Texas. So I think more, I think Vietnamese is more popular than you're giving it credit for. And it's not, uh, not more niche than, <laughs> than Japanese or ramen because everyone's had sushi. Sushi's a thing that's been around forever. Well, I mean, like, whatever. Like, I've, like, I, I haven't tried ramen or even been interested in ramen in, I would say, like, up until, like, five, maybe six years ago. Yeah, but, like, people eat tons of ramen in college. Granted, it's instant ramen, but, like, I I feel like that at least puts it on people's radar. And I feel like even the new members of the Puminati, you don't have to listen to too many episodes before you discover that Jeff is ass-backwards. So if Jeff thinks pho is more popular than ramen, ramen is more popular. Yeah, right. Well, Venmo was that? Does that episode still fucking exist? I I I, I, I nuked on the, it. On the fucking, you I, nuked don't it. listen to him about Venmo nonsense when he's paying me through Apple Cash instead of using Venmo. Oh, shots fired. He's got an iPhone. He gets every new iPhone. I figured he was on Apple Cash, and it was just an easier thing just to send it right through our. Oh, easier than Venmo. It's. I literally think the icon (laughs) is. I think it's the Apple Pay icon is more left than the Venmo icon inside of the text message. So yes, technically speaking, paying him an Apple Pay was a fucking millimeter easier all right you know what i'll put that episode back up <laughs> all right cool thanks <laughs> thanks i'm glad i won that one all right um you guys want to said something to say the fuck well, was it do you guys want to end things with a quick game well, real quick this is kind of funny this is going to show you how fucking dumb and air airheaded i am <laughs> i ate ramen my whole fucking life of course like i grew up on ramen especially when my parents had less money I actually didn't know it was like a Japanese thing. Like I didn't know it was like an Asian thing really. I just thought it was like You're sitting there eating ramen, food. you're like, Oh man, these fucking Italians are, are good at everything. <laughs> I just thought it was it's like poor people food. I thought it was like ghetto white trash food. I didn't know like it was actually a cuisine that was being like copped or culture vultured or appropriated, however you want. <laughs> however you want to say it, dumbed down and made cheaper for the fucking white trash like myself. But I, I never even knew it was like a Japanese cuisine up until again, like five or six years ago. That's what I'm saying. That's I think, so, like, I think Bill should make you watch Tom Popo. Well, if there's titties, maybe there are maybe titties. I'll, yeah. Maybe I'll give it a shot. I mean, the, the way I was talking about another round when the, the waiter is describing all the booze and I'm just like, Oh, I want to get trashed right now. So bad. Like, all the stuff that they showed. Not so much the prawn, like, jiggling on that lady's belly. But all the food stuff, I was just like, oh, man, I want ramen right now so bad. 
Oops, sounds like uh, somebody else wants some ramen. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, you know that I, we usually take this week off? You haven't recognized that pattern. It's happened in the last five years, I think. Four is years. Is this the week you go to Vegas? No. This is the week. Uh, tonight is the national championship game in college football. And we and usually you, don't record. Yeah, we because my, my homie throws an open bar, all-you-can-eat food at this oh, local yeah. sports bar every year, and I go and just get fucking trash and put money on the college football game, and COVID killed it this year. So I'm a little bummed out because this is seriously, like, usually my a top five day in my year. I fucking love today. I've won four of the last five years on this day. I get fucking wasted and eat chicken wings for three hours. It's beautiful. It's how America should be. All right, Sorry, well, I, I think play the game. we still have time for a game. So I got other things to talk about. Without further a poo. It's time for IMD Boner. 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 <laughs> That's right, friends. I'm about to beat Jeff's ass once again. An IMD Boner, a movie trivia game where Shuddy will read from the parental guidelines section of an IMDb movie listing, and we have to try and guess what movie it is based on the clues. Uh, most of the time, it's sexy stuff like titties and butts. Um, sometimes there's not enough clues there for Jeff and myself to make a guess, so he'll go to you know the violence or swearing or other instances that uh, earned this movie some warnings for the parents out there. Did I win this recently? I know I stole one from one of you guys. I upset one of you guys in I mean, either leather, le- the Letterbox D or the IMD boner game. We've, we've been throwing Should some... Do you remember? We've you been throwing your... some pretty gigantic um, bumper lanes in the games we've been playing lately to give Jeff a fighting chance. So, <laughs> <laughs> No, I beat you clean in one of them. Don't be like that. I didn't hit off the girl. See, I beat you fair and square, all right? As a fucking 16 seed, I beat you, you son of a bitch. All right. This movie is from 2003. Mm. Good year. Okay. Good year. There are many sexual references throughout. A man and a woman visit an adult novelty store. Hmm. A woman wears a revealing outfit, including a very small top, backless pants, and a thong. Those backless pants are commonly referred to as chaps. Assless chaps. Various shots of nude women in magazines. Is there, I'm sorry, is there a category attached to this? Did you... Did you lead with that, or are you just going right I, off of 2003? I just went off of 2003 because okay. the, the hint, uh, there's two hints. One of them is super obvious. Um, one is not helpful at all, which is this person's birthday is tomorrow. The goods. Well, that's not the full title of the movie, but no, it is not that. Uh, woman really- is shown topless laughing and rolling on a bed. Hmm. Why would she be laughing? That's a clue. Some flashing female nudity. Wedding crashers. Naked female body oh. is found in a trunk of car. No nudity, though. Man, I thought Jeff had it nailed at that point. Right. Uh, it I mean, strongly implied that the female lead character is a necrophiliac. Oh, my God. Girl with a dragon tattoo? Brief Same disturbing thing, footage of a woman kissing a decayed skeleton and rubbing her breasts on the hands. There's Jesus no way Christ. I've seen this fucking movie. Uh, Eight hmm. millimeter. That uh, is all of the sex and nudity. Man. I, so according to IMDb, the violence and gore in this movie is severe. All right. So it's got to be a horror movie. Is this like Return of the Living Dead Part 3? This is how he always wins, these gay-ass movies that he's watched. During an attempted robbery, two robbers hold two other men at gunpoint. One shot is fired into the ceiling, and no one is hurt. One of the attackers <gasps> oh. is shot in the head. Oh. Uh, from Dust Till Dawn. 
The other attacker Fuck. is hit in the head with an axe. Blood is shown. It's 2003, you dumbass. Evil Dead 3. I don't know. Man tied to a wall has straight razor drug across his face. The bloodied man has his hands cut off with an axe. Holy shit, Shuddy. What, what the fuck? Fucking... Hostile 2. Snuff films are you getting us into here? Hostile 1. Characters go through Museum of Monsters and Mad Men. Various graphic depictions oh. and descriptions of actions of notorious serial House killers. of a Thousand Corpses. You got it. I've never seen that Rob Zombie's birthday is tomorrow. Oh, yep, tomorrow, the 12th. That oh, guy, great. We're going to talk about that, Queef. He does not like skate parks. <laughs> yeah. This next one is a lot noises. from 2009. This person's birthday is on a person in this movie. His birthday is January 14th. I know what it yeah. is. It's birthday week. Collateral. Girl wears bikini and skimpy clothes at several occasions in the movie. Spring Breakers. Very mild sexual references with the exception of three stronger scenes. Euro Trip. Two scenes imply sexual activity, but none is shown. Another scene shows a guy preparing to masturbate, but he is interrupted. And another scene shows the same guy getting an erection under a sheet. American, American Wedding. A guy performs <sighs> suggestive yoga moves on the wives of the characters. Oh, One of the women retreat. enjoys it. Kevin got it. Oh, eat my asshole, Jeff. Jason Bateman. That- pussy. Okay. Wait, is that fa- phase on love, isn't that? I think so. Right? Shuddy? You're on He's IMDb. Black yes, Phase on Love. There was okay. All right. Yeah, I I, uh, I don't think I've seen that one. Great. So we're just giving Kevin his favorite movies. Of course, he's going to beat me. It's not my favorite. All movies. right. And because January it's a 14th Kevin Craft classic, is also the triple K movie that the great Alan Rickman passed away. Oh, give me some booze. Pour it out right this now. This is an Alan Rickman movie from 2003. Okay, I, you can just give Kevin the point if you want. <laughs> Male topless nudity sometimes for an extended period of time. Male extended topless period, nudity? Extended period together with bottom nudity. Uh, do you like looking at my tits, Mr. Potter? <laughs> <laughs> Apart from give him two points. Give him two points. <laughs> He's won this round. Apart from the minor storyline following the two actors, serious sexual content isn't an issue. I have no issue showing you my erect penis, Mr. Cowboy. The early TV broadcast edited out all nudity of the subplot of two porn actors rehearsing mostly nude, male and female topless nudity and simulated fellatio. That doesn't seem like it's a part of this movie. That might not be right. Um, it could literally be no. on Alan Rickman's IMDb and not have a fucking guess here. That is definitely a part of Love Actually. Okay, <laughs> then yes, that is the movie. <laughs> yeah, another Kevin Craft classic. Of course. I've seen these fucking movies. What do you want me to do? I've all fallen right. upon go. tough times right. and I'm going so to those are, uh, Those are all of the themes. Ah, never mind. Shuddy Boy's talking. Sorry. Nah, I got enough juice out of my Rickman impression. Go ahead. Those are the last of the theme movies. Uh, we'll go over to pre. I mean, does Jeff even ones. have a fighting chance at this point? I mean, I was only going to do five. So if so, we, I got I, I got to sweep through to win, right? I would say if you sweep it, we'll give you the win. You'll get two points for that, and then two points for sweeping. We'll double. These are worth double. No, because he he didn't get the first one, right? Yes, he did. House of a Thousand Corpses. Oh, he did. So you've gotten three already? He's gotten three. All right. Yeah, I lost, but let's just keep going through it. God fucking damn it. And I've decided that I'm just reading them as I 
as they come up in order. I'm not going to try ordering them into any more confusing. So yeah, this, sure this one's gonna be fucking anime or something from 1999. <laughs> lots and lots of sexual puns and innuendo, including references to lesbianism, oral sex, menage a trois, and swinging. Chase and Amy. Several oh. times we see a man and woman in bed, but always pre or post coitus. In one scene, we hear some sexual moaning before, before we see the couple in bed. And in another scene, we see a man with lipstick all over his body sitting next to a woman. Oh. A man and woman play chess and become sec- very sexually aroused. They lick and suck on the pieces. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. God oh, damn it, I know this. Guy's playing <sighs> chess, getting all horny, and he's like, Ooh, how about I seductively blow this horse? A man is briefly seen humping a laser gun, and a man bumps and grinds while caressing his clothed nipple. Clothed nipples. Okay, now I'm out. Out of sight. A phallic-shaped rocket flies around the Earth, and we hear lots of slang terms used to describe it. Oh, I know that's again. Is orgasmo? Numerous what scantily clad women. One woman lifts up her dress and reveals her panty clad buttocks. Buttocks? A man is They're briefly awesome. seen in a bikini, and for a split second, we see a man wearing panties and a bra. Oh, this is the Austin, Austin Powers gold member. No. no. During the opening credits, a man, a naked man walks around a hotel and pool, but his groin and buttocks are always blurry or covered. Usually by a phallic prop. You're completely um, making this movie up. Uh, the Spy Who Shagged Me. Full title? Austin Powers, The Spy Who Shagged Me. All right, Jeff. I'm going to go and take a poop in an empty Amazon box and mail it to you. You were so you close. Can't. I heard you say Austin, and I was like, oh. But it's not gold member. Sorry, Jeff. You can just leave it outside your uh, little gate there and I'll come pick it up and eat it. Just go to Poop Slime Alley. <laughs> what a fucking disgrace. I that's I remember that whole bit where they see the, the flying dick and they're all they're all it looks like a one headed mind and then it just keeps going. Each yep. person has a different dick joke. I knew it was Austin Powers. But I was so committed to it being gold member. Fuck. Do you think enough time has passed where they can treat Austin Powers movies like they do Bond movies and just sub in a different Austin Powers and keep the franchise going? Who would it be now? Uh, probably one of those Flight, Mike, of, the Com- Flight of the Concord Whatever happened guys? to Mike Myers? It's a good question. Probably Did just enjoying just money. So much- How does he, yeah. Did he make so much money off of this? He's just kind of done? He had to have, even with like the flops towards the end. It's it's the Shrek money that keeps him oh, yeah. from oh. having to work. Fuck. Shrek money on top of Austin Powers money? Shrek money is where he's making his money. And I'm sure that Wayne's World money ain't that bad. I wonder no. if that. Yeah. Yeah, he's got, I love Mike Myers. Good Canadian. <laughs> All right, friends. Well, that's our show for the week. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. And if you need more, the party continues. We are going to follow up on last week's epic Patreon podcast shortly after this. It's patreon.com slash mad scientist party hour if you'd like to sign up. Supermarket Queefs is straight up fucking killing it on the $10 tier. Shuddy Boy just launched Soda Jerk, his new soda review uh, video that's up on on, uh, the $10 tier. And, you know, you got the snack attacks, the nerd holes, all that stuff. It's basically its own Disney Plus at this point, just way, way dirtier. Subscribe and like on YouTube, for fuck's sake, help us out. We have we have YouTube chodes. That's what we have. Is that where I've... the penis is wider than it is long? Yeah. Oh, man, we can't sit here with our fucking little chodes in our hands. That's what happens when you have more Patreon subscribers than fucking YouTube views. You have a chode. We have a fucking YouTube <laughs> chode. That's what, that's what we have. And, and thank you, Patreon subscribers. Also, shout out to everybody who's hooked us up with a review and um, a subscription on Apple Podcast, iTunes. Um, our numbers are 
We definitely don't have a chode there. We're looking cool. We're almost at 900, and then we can start panhandling to get us to 1,000. And at that point, when you're in, like, four digits, you look fucking cool as shit on iTunes. So if you haven't done so, if you wouldn't mind taking the three seconds to just hook us up with a review and a subscribe, it goes goes a long way, friends. Um, If you want to be a part of voicemails, yay, just call 201-472-0139 and leave a message after the beep. Or you can just shoot your emails to madscientistpartyhour at gmail.com. We're still looking for questions for Dr. Steve. So if you have any medical questions, um, anything you've felt was too goofy to ask a doctor and you might be embarrassed, just email it to us. We'll ask Dr. Steve. He'll explain it in a way that you can understand it. And you can remain anonymous if you want. So you don't even have to get embarrassed by asking what that weird thing growing on your bunghole is. Uh, uh, what else? The current status of the ramen versus uh, pho poll that I ran in uh, Discord is 5-5 five, five right now. Ooh, tight race. Okay. I, I don't know how to do a poll. Someone else did the poll. I asked the question and did the ad here, and then you know they cleaned it up. Shout out to that guy. I don't know who it was or girl. And you can also follow us on Instagram. I'm at Kevin Craft. At Shuddy Boy. At Jeff Rowe Records. And at MSPH Podcast. Check out Fade the Media, Jeff's sports podcast. Shuddy, you got anything? Um, I am going to be a guest on our homie Gen T's podcast, Ramboper Radio, this weekend. Oh, fuck yeah. So awesome. I'm going to do that this weekend. So nice. look for that. Yeah, Don't make us look out, like friends. fucking pussies. I know. I have to <laughs> put my best foot forward. All right, friends. Well, thank you for listening. But until next time, 